Minimal APIs are not just for demos. Also, they don't need to be a disorganized mess. What if I told you that there's a pattern that can make your minimal APIs clean and organized? Not only that, but you also can improve your API controllers. So stay till the end if you want to see how. The pattern is REPR, Request and Point Response. It was first introduced by Steve Smith as a way to organize your controllers. But nowadays, when we look into minimal APIs, it makes a lot of sense to apply this pattern since it can solve one of the most common concerns of everyone trying to use minimal APIs, the lack of structure and organization. Before we go into minimal APIs, it's important to reflect about why this pattern exists, what type of problems it was trying to solve on controllers. And let's start by the most evident one. As you know, API controllers come from MVC, but when you are building just an API, you don't have the V there, so there's no views. So now your MVC pattern is basically an MC pattern. So to me, it's clear that this solution became the most common one since MVC was the only way of doing things. Then it started morphing into this new APIs approach based on controllers. And if this approach is the one that comes out of the box when you create a new project, this will conquer 99% of the new projects that you see in the .NET space. So what's the problem on having those controllers and models alone? The problem is that those controllers are not cohesive. And when you look into them, you can see that they are a collection of methods that you don't see them related to each other. Each one of those is independent. You have your post, you have your put, you have your get, but they don't call each other. They don't have a dependency between each other. And it's extremely rare to see them working on the same state. So that leads to the question, is this maintainable? Is this easy to understand? Are we respecting the single responsibility principle? That's where this pattern can help you. Let's create a simple API to explain you how to organize using this pattern and what you can gain with it. I will not be using frameworks on this example, but by the end, I will point you to two that maybe might be useful to you. And by the way, you can grab the source code as a patron as always. Let's create a few endpoints to work on top of something like to-dos. Let's have an endpoint for to-do list and another one to create one. The same approach that you'll be doing on this one, you could apply to the rest of your endpoints. The first thing that I will be doing is create a folder that will represent this scope of features that I have. By the way, we will be organizing this in a feature-driven way, so it's quite useful to take these principles to every single thing you do. To-dos folder, and inside the to-dos folder, I will create another one for the list endpoint is the first one that you'll be creating. We have here our to-dos and the list. Inside of the list folder, let's create our first class. The class will be our endpoint home, let's say. Since I'm working with minimal APIs, I will create this class as a static class, just to simplify the source code that I'll be building in. Then I will add a method. I will invoke this method to register the endpoints. So here I will say that I want to map a get on the API slash to-dos and will invoke the handle async method that I will create now. With this, we have our first endpoint. Now it's the time to move forward and make it do something. So we'll start returning data and receiving data. The return is basically the response. What this design pattern tells you is that you should keep your endpoint request and response together. So inside of the same folder, the list folder, what you'll be doing is to create a new class. I will name it response and I will create it as a record. Why as a record? Because I find that records are quite useful for this type of things where you, you have the contract with the outside when we are just transferring data. And our response can be something like this. For example, a field where we'll return saying the total number of to-dos that we have. So if you want to do pagination, you can do it, for example. And also a list of all the data that we are returning on that list. And each entry is a response item that will have an ID and a title. Now we can go back to our endpoint and we define here the type of the response. Since this one is just a list, we'll not receive anything. We could be getting, for example, filters or sorting, but on this simple example, I will not be doing that. I will just return some dummy data on this case. I will just return something as simple as this. Let's now take a look into one a bit more complex, that is the create. The idea is the same, create a folder, create, inside of todos, so if you go through the namespace, you know what this thing is about, so todos.create.create. 
endpoint on this case. If you prefer, you can also name, for example, in this case, a create endpoint or a list endpoint. If you don't want to have multiple things named endpoint inside of your source code, do that to the endpoints, to the response, to the requests, to every single of those things. Let's apply the same logic that we have done on the list. This time it will be a post and on our handle method, now we need to receive something. Let's create a request record. It will be inside of the todos.create once again. And now we define the properties that that request will have. And let's say that to create a new to-do, I just need to send a title and eventually a due date. So I will just define those two properties. So I will use this request to do something and then I want to return something back. When you send something to create, often you need to return things like IDs. You may want to return something like the author or other properties that are calculated by your system. So let's create our response object for our create endpoint. And our response can be something like this, ID, title, due date, and author. So now we will send this request to a given service, we'll call a database, something like that. And from that, we'll eventually get our ID. Maybe it can be an auto-generated ID, it can be something that comes from the database, whatever. We'll return the title, due date, something more, and also the author that obviously would come from authentication for the user identity. If we take a look now into the folder structure, you can see that now it's quite simple to understand where things are. If you are working on the create of a to-do, you will get into the endpoint. And if you want to do some changes or you want to access the contracts related to that endpoint, they are right there next to the endpoint itself. Besides that, organizing endpoints for different resources will be just a folder side by side with this to-dos one. So if you have endpoints for different things like managing the users of your system, you have a different folder, the users, and inside there you will have your endpoints to list, to get, to create something, to inactivate, to archive, all the operations will be there. As you can see, what you get from applying this design pattern is that you will gain maintainability and organization. So minimal APIs don't need to have that lack of structure that many believe. And you also gain a better segregation of responsibilities because now if you need to do something related to the create, you have every single thing inside of a single file and you don't need to change the list endpoint because you are doing a change on the create, for example. Not only that, but in terms of productivity, it's quite simple to find related things. When you are doing something like MVC, you will have, for example, a folder with your controllers and another one with your models. So things related are kept apart from each other. This is a feature-driven way of structuring your API. If you are familiar with clean architecture, you may recognize this as a screaming architecture. So now the last thing that you'll need to do is to go into your program.cs and we'll call the mappers to map the endpoints into your API. And as I promised you, let me tell you about two frameworks that you may want to take a look into. So the first one is that if you are currently working with MVC controllers and you want to move into a structure like this one, but you don't want to go right into minimal APIs, maybe you want to see this project. It's the API endpoints project by Steve Smith and it can help you to achieve something like the things that I showed you right here. On the other hand, if you want to start working with minimal APIs and you are just starting or you want to apply an organization like this one, but you don't want to do every single thing by hand, maybe you want to take a look into fast endpoints. Fast endpoints is designed in a way that enables you to apply this design pattern. So it will guide you to apply these concepts. So what do you think about this? How have you been structuring your minimal APIs? Do you have another approach that I don't know? Please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And by the way, if you are moving from controllers to minimal APIs, maybe you want to take a look into this video right here. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.